remember Just the arm that you could not take your breath You could not say you won't remember But do you though remember Disney? I don't think so man because we never did this algorithm before but anyway, today's your lucky day because we're going to be delving into Disney. -a. Hi guys, it's Dr. Ryan here again. It's my honor and privilege to be uh, bringing another algorithm in internal medicine to you. I hope that you well. Thank you for liking and sharing my videos. So now, if you have to think about song titles that allude to the theme of Disney, -a, what do you think of? You think back to the 80s with uh, the police and sting. <laughs> Every breath you take, every move you make, every single day, every time I pray. You know that one? And going to a time even before that. Take my breath away. Oh. Anyway, we're not going to be taking anybody's breath away. I'm just going to be talking about breathlessness. So dyspnea, as we know, is a subjective experience of breathing discomfort or breathlessness. Breathing is regulated by the respiratory sensors in the brainstem, which receive information from various sensory inputs, including chemoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, and metaboreceptors. The causes of dyspnea can be separated into the following categories. We said this cardiac on the left-hand side, pulmonary in the middle, and then others, and pulmonary we can further stratify into involving the airway, the parenchyma, the vasculature, and the pleura. All right, so let's dig into this, right? Cardiac, possible causes of dyspnea include dysrhythmia, right? Notably, uh, tachyarrhythmias. Uh, infection in the way of, um, you know, infective endocarditis, myocarditis, uh, pericarditis. Cardiomyopathies, both dilated and hypertrophic, right? Restrictive as well. Valvular disease, I'm sure you can think of many examples there. Tamponade, okay. Constrictive pericarditis, myocarditis, um, superior vena cava syndrome, and of course, shunt. Right? Now, a fun way to represent uh, constrictive pericarditis or tamponade um, is in this beautiful uh, picture here, which is courtesy once again of Mr. George Muniz over at medcomic.com. This is Cardiac tamponade. So when we think of cardiac tamponade, we think of Bix triad. And that's what this poor heart is trying to say. He's saying mixed broil. I think he means Bix triad, which encompasses a triad of muffled heart sounds, hypotension, and distended neck veins. And we see a needle coming in here because that's the management of cardiac tamponade, right? It's an accumulation of fluid in the pericardial sac, which impairs diastolic filling, producing cardiac output. And the way you manage that is with pericardius and Jesus. Good stuff. All right. So then under pulmonary causes of dyspnea, there's 19 of them. If you focus on the airway, think about stuff in the airway, right? Bronchitis, COPD, right? Which, as we know, entails the two pathological entities of chronic bronchitis, which is cough on most days uh, for at least three months of at least two consecutive years, and emphysema, which refers to uh, dilatation of the airway distal to the terminal bronchial. Asthma, as we know, bronchiectasis anaphylaxis, trachomalacia, and foreign body. Then what affects the parenchyma of the lung that can cause dyspnea includes pneumonia, right, pulmonary edema, and that can be cardiogenic or non-cardiogenic, right? Atelectasis, emphysema, cancer, interstitial lung disease. And now, we covered ILD in a previous uh, algorithm. I'm sure you remember. And then vasculature, there's four. Pulmonary embolus, pulmonary hypertension. Remember, according to the WHO classification, there's five different classes uh, of pulmonary hypertension. Class one is that associated with pulmonary arterial hypertension. Class two is what we refer to as segment due to left-sided uh, heart dysfunction or what was previously called venous hypertension. And three is due to hypoxemia, where you think about COPD, you think about um, you know, alveolar hypoventilation syndromes, for instance. Uh, class 4 is that associated with thromboembolic phenomenology. And then lastly, the miscellaneous group, right? The vascular disease, as we know, when AV malformation comes in. And then pleura, pleural effusion, pneumothorax. And this is a fun way to represent a tension pneumothorax. 
Right here, basically, once again, from George Muniz over at Medcomic, it enters the pleural space, compression the lung, shifting the mediastinum. So here we have a right side of pneumothorax, and you know, when you percuss over that, it's hyper resonance, as depicted by banging on this bongo drum here. And whisper means that you get absent breath sounds or decreased breath sounds on that side. Compression of the trachea towards, and so it actually pushes the trachea to the other side. And the management here is, uh, obviously, the left side of the lung is getting a bit distressed. Is the chest tube in yet? And obviously, treatment is with needle decompression in the second cost of space of the mechanical line, followed by a thoracostomy, which is, uh, you know, insertion of a formal intercostal chest drain. Now, cardiac and pulmonary are not the only causes of dyspnea. There are a variety of others as well, like anxiety. And anxiety, we say these patients often hyperventilate in the situation is that of a respiratory alkalosis, which can cause uh, uh, hypocalcemia, right? So watch out for that. Anemia can cause it, reduced uh, atmospheric uh, partial pressure of oxygen. So obviously, if you are uh, in an environment where there's not enough oxygen, like you mountain climbing high up and you haven't uh, acclimatized yet, uh, looking at extrapulmonary hypoventilation, metabolic acidosis can cause it as well, you know, because these patients, they often uh, have Kussmaul's respiration or they increase the respiratory rate and depth, pregnancy, thyroid toxicosis, deconditioning as well. So you've got eight other causes. You've got pulmonary, there's 19, cardiac, there's nine, giving you a whopping 36 causes of dyspnea. So once again, some encouragement uh, for you this beautiful morning. You know, Aristotle was a famous Greek philosopher and he said, you are what you repetitively do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act but a habit. And I'm sure you know. remember this. You remember this from a previous algorithm uh, that we presented. But excellence, I'd like to tell you, is never an accident. It is the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, skillful execution, and the vision to see obstacles as opportunities. The, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11, the Lord says, For I know the plans I have for you, Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Proverbs chapter 10 verse number 22 says, The blessings of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow. So I pray that upon your life, that uh, you pursue excellence and that God will make provision for you. Thank you so much and thank you for joining me on this uh, high impact, high yield algorithm. Uh, we're going to be talking about another general topic in internal medicine tomorrow. Stay safe and keep well.